So, static variables have been part of Game Maker for a while now, uh, since uh, pretty much 2.3 came out, ushering in the new era of, of GML. And uh, you can do some interesting things with static variables, uh, which I'm not going to get into now. I did cover these fairly extensively when they were new, and not a lot has changed about them until, well, this month. Um, so if you wanted to, for example, uh, keep track of how many times a function has been called, uh, you could do something like define a static variable which increments every time the function is called, and then... Um, you could have it announce itself as a debug message or something along those lines. And now, uh, every time you run this, you would see you would see this uh, this variable ticking upwards. So static variables, uh, let's go and game end so that I don't have to close the game window manually. Uh, we're going to increment this value in the console every time we call the function. Uh, static variables, to make a long story short, belong to a the scope of a function. Uh, they're not local variables, which are erased after a function has left the call stack. They're not instance variables, which belong to an instance of an object or a struct or something like that. And this can be used to do some specific things that might be a little bit messy otherwise. Things that uh, you might otherwise use, uh, for example, global variables for. Again, I won't be getting into that now. But, um, to the annoyance of some, you did not previously have a way to access this variable call count outside of uh, the function itself, or outside of the struct constructor, um, if you were dealing with a, an instance of a struct that had static properties. Uh, if you were to try to do something like show message um, some function uh, with or without the parentheses dot call count, um, you wouldn't get an answer. You would just have the game crash because it didn't know what to do with this. Uh, this is going to crash because you're trying to because some function with parentheses is going to implicitly return undefined, and you can't get a value out of undefined as hard as you try. Um, if you were to try to do this without the parentheses, perhaps you might know that internally functions like this are just uh, basically instance IDs. Um, this is something that you might expect to work reasonably, but it's also wouldn't have worked in the past. Um, I guess I'm getting a little ahead of myself in this example, but you can see that now in the um, in Game Maker 2023.1, uh, you actually can read um, the property call count from a static variable like this um, with a function name uh, without the parentheses, so basically the function ID. And that can sometimes be useful if you want to see what's inside the static variable from the outside. Um, previously, static, beha static variables uh, behaved a bit like private variables. GameMaker doesn't really give us private variable access or anything like that. Um, but static variables were sort of like that in that you couldn't see what they contained from the outside. But you now can. Um, there is not, for better or for worse, a way to do the reverse. And I don't know if it's going to stay like this forever. I don't know if um, if there's going to be future changes to Game Maker, which do allow you to do this in reverse and assign values to static variables. Hey. As you can see, when I do it here, uh, we get to the first three function calls, and then we try to set the variable, and then it just doesn't work um, because Game Maker is trying to basically look up a value in an, in, in an instance that it doesn't think exists. Um, again, I don't know if that's by design. I don't know if... Uh, at some point in the future, uh, that's going to change. You can easily run this code yourself um, in a future Game Maker version to see if it works or not. But as of right now, in January slash February 2023, uh, you can't do this. So I'm going to comment to that out. Um, if you were to try to uh, show, show message uh, without the debug uh, of some function dot call count before the function has ever run once. Uh, this would also not work, and I'll explain why in a minute, but first I'm just going to run this and show that this is going to crash the game um, with a, a variable not set before reading it, error message. Um, even though that if you run this later on, it's perfectly fine. So some of you might know why that doesn't work. Uh, some of you might have come across this in the past. Um, a static variable, even though it does persist between function calls and, um, and it isn't deleted from the program's memory between function calls, uh, they won't actually exist until the function has been called for the first time. So if we try to call this, uh, if we try to get the value out of this function here, the, the variable does not exist yet, and it will not exist until some function is called for the first time. Uh, but after you do that, after you run the function once, uh, the 
um, static variables inside the function, uh, however many there may be, do exist, and you can uh, access them like this. So this has some implications, and some people may or may not be interested in this. Uh, the main one that I can think of is that if you have... Uh, and this is something that a lot of us tried to do back in the early days of 2.3 that turned out to not really work uh, the way we thought it did, but that's okay. Um, if you add something like a function, um, like a math like library or something. I'm just going to call it function math. Um, and it's not going to actually execute any code, but it's going to contain a few static members. Uh, let's say static add. Can add two numbers together. Static. Let's uh, do something interesting. It's an interesting operation. I like the dot product personally. Uh, we'll do a 2D dot product. Um, add can obviously uh, return a plus b. Uh, the 2D dot product is going to return x1 times x2 plus y1 times y2. Some people who write things like code libraries and game maker extensions may wish that uh, there was a nice easy way to basically namespace code so that you could simply, simply say something like math.add. Um, let's say 5 and 10 is our example values. And uh, this does bring us one step closer to that. We don't have true namespaces. But this does give you an, a somewhat interesting way to organize your code. Um, again, this will not work unless you call the math function at least once to basically initialize it, even though the math function here uh, doesn't actually do anything of its own. Uh, but this will allow you to use static variables and static methods, kind of like static, um, static methods would in a language such as C Sharp or Java, uh, which is what probably the languages that most of us that thought we could get away with this in the early days of uh, Game Maker Studio 2.3 came from as our like programming background. Um, you can see that it popped out in the console. If I were to, uh, of course, comment out the initial like initialization call to the math function, we are going to instead get a crash. Uh, this will allow you to um, sort of a uh, get one step closer at least to faking namespaces. Uh, let's do a let's do a, a dot product. So let's say five and ten and like. Um, zero and one, just because that's something I can do in my head easily. That's going to give us a 10. Um, and that is indeed what we get out over here in the console. So this gives you a way to namespace, uh, like create your own namespaces, if you want to distribute a bunch of code for people to use. Now, there is one other change that has been made to static variables, uh, specifically when it comes to structs in the 2023.1 update to GameMaker, but I don't want to get into that now. In essence, structs that were created uh, by a constructor function retain a little bit more information of exactly what type they are than they used to. But that's going to be an explanation that's going to run a little bit longer. And I don't want something that should just be a quick update video like this to be dragged out for like a half hour or more. So, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. To the library creators out there, you know who you are. I hope you get some value out of this. I try to make about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this, and one let's make a game. So if anything like that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found this interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Harold Guidry, Kiexi, Manta Ray, Sindra Larson, Square Crow, The Oz, V V, and Zengiments for supporting these videos. If you want to support the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.